test. So another video here, just going over what electromagnetic induction is, and another way of calling electromagnetic induction is the generator effect, okay? So in the previous video there, we went over Faraday's law. So Faraday's law is this equation here. Faraday's law, we said that the EMF induced is directly proportional to the rate of change of that magnetic flux linkage. So that's why, that's the principle we use. We use Verity's law when we do the generator effect, when we get electromagnetic induction. So again, that's what that is. EMF is our electromagnetic induction, and EMF is induced, and we use this in the generator effect. So in generators, which we're gonna look at in another video, but generators is just what we call this, the generator effect. Same way like when you did um, GCSEs or you did F equals BIL, we did they call it the motor effect. So the generator effect is what it is. If you think about generators, if you think about those old movies, if you spin the generator, what you're doing is you're just spinning the wire around a coil, we're gonna get an EMF in just, we use generators to generate electricity. We always use them in the national grid. We know we've got generators there because we're gonna have a spinning coil around a magnet and that's how we're gonna get an EMF in just, we get our electricity then. So one place you'll see them is in your microphones. So microphones also use this electromagnetic induction. They use Faraday's law. They use the generator effect. And what happens is you've got these sound waves. Remember, sound waves are pressure waves. So what happens is, remember, the oscillations are parallel to the direction of energy transfer. So what's happening here is we get all these particles, the air particles that are oscillating, right? Parallel to the direction of energy transfer. And in a microphone, you know, we've got that outer diaphragm. What happens is, is when those oscillations, when those vibrations hit the diaphragm, they cause the diaphragm also to oscillate or vibrate. And that diaphragm then is connected to this coil. So when the diaphragm is oscillating or vibrating, this coil of wire is also oscillating or vibrating. So what you can see now is I've got a coil of wire that is moving through that permanent magnet. Okay, so again, if I've got a coil of wire that's moving through that permanent magnet, again, in this permanent magnet, we know we're going to have those magnetic field lines. So there's my north, there's my south, there's my south. Magnetic field lines go out of north and into south. So what's happening, if this coil of wire is moving, what we're doing is we're changing the number of magnetic field lines that are passing through it. So again, what we're doing is we're changing that magnetic flux linkage. Because remember, what magnetic flux stands for is B. B just tells us the number, the magnetic field strength, magnetic flux density. It's just telling us how many field lines are cutting through a coil of wire. So for example, if that was my coil of wire, here I've got more magnetic field lines cutting it. Here I have a larger magnetic flux density, more field lines cutting my coil of wire. So here I would get more of an EMF. So what I'm trying to say is, we're looking at the number of magnetic field lines that are cutting our coil of wire. And what we can see is, as our coil of wire is moving or vibrating, we're changing the number of field lines that are passing through that coil of wire. And if we're changing the number of magnetic field lines that are passing through our coil of wire, what's gonna get is an EMF in just. So again, what's happening here is that we're gonna have the vibrations from the sound wave cause the diaphragm and thus, because they're connected, that coil of wire to vibrate. And then what happens now, we just said, we have that coil of wire vibrating or moving. We have it cutting or passing through the magnetic field lines. Okay, and if we have that coil of wire cutting or passing through that magnetic field lines, we're gonna get an EMF in just. Okay. And that EMF in just then is going to give us our electricity, right? It's a complete circuit. We get that current. So that's why then the EMF in just, what's going to happen is we're going to get an EMF in just, electrical signals in just. They're going to have the same frequency as our vibrations frequency. Okay, so we're going to get an EMF in just. And our EMF in just is going to change directions because, again, what's happening is our wire is constantly changing directions. So we're going to get that alternating EMF. So again, it's just different ways that you can see this principle applied, and it's always the same steps. You always want to think about if you have a moving coil or a moving magnet, where do it have a rate of change of magnetic flux linkage? So again, vibrations cause the diaphragm, the coil of wire to vibrate, cutting the magnetic field lines, EMF and just, just better to add, as there was, as there is a rate of change of magnetic flux linkage.